Uh, and now we will preoccupy ourselves with what the nation is preoccupied with. It's not markets that's uppermost. Uh, it's the seventh polling phase and the sixth polling pa phases. So far, just another week to go and uh, the polls will be over and we'll be awaiting the results. Uh, Vinay Tiwari, managing, managing editor of uh, CNNIB and joins in to decode for us what the mood is. They are the gentlemen who are out in the field and they're all their field reporters reporting to Vinay Tiwari. So Vinay Tiwari, no one knows the mood of the nation perhaps as well as you could. Uh, tell us, uh, 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 what is the sense you are getting? Is it look like a, uh, looking like a sweeping BJP juggernaut uh, or are the uh, wheels looking like slowing? Well, I think, Lata, the, 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 the funny thing about a nine-phase contest is that each one is actually a different game altogether. Mm. Uh, and if elections are 2020, this is perhaps the seventh game in the series, and I think each game is different. Uh, today's game is perhaps the most critical uh, for both Congress and the BJP for different reasons in different states. Uh, UP, for instance, which is the battleground which everybody is looking at with greatest fascination, uh, this is the area which is extremely critical for the BJP to get it right. Uh, last time, uh, the, the rewards for BJP from these 14 states that are going to polls today was not very good. They only got one seat out of the 14 that are going to polls today, whereas the Congress did very well in this phase. So a turnaround in this phase uh, could well mean uh, BJP's nose ahead in a very critical state of, of UP. Uh, similarly, I think BJP is looking at Andhra very carefully today because the Telangana region goes to poll and their pre-poll alliance with the TDP, uh, they are expecting to reap uh, some benefit from that uh, and pre pretty much looking at this state as the add-on seats and not so much the default seats that they've calculated in the first instance itself. But I think apart from the criticality of states, uh, this is the one phase which has some riveting contests on. Mm -hmm. uh, we have almost the top four of BJP uh, in the fray today. You have Joshi from Kanpur, you have Modi from, from Badodra and Jaitley from Amritsar who is perhaps uh, locked in a bitter, bitter fight with Amrinder Singh, perhaps one of the closest contests that you will see in this election. And that's why uh, the story Lata in each state is a little different uh, as, as also each, each phase and today's is no different. Okay. Vinay, hi, good morning. Um, you spoke about UP, Andhra, you spoke about, a little about Punjab as well. What about West Bengal? There are some nine seats over there. Most pollsters uh, we've spoken to at least to rule out the BJP's outright win in those nine seats. But uh, what's the feel that you're getting? That's right. I think I think that that assessment is fairly accurate. But I think the real this phase in West Bengal is more critical for the Congress. They had won four seats uh, from the ones which have gone to polls, uh, which are going to polls today, uh, and pretty much it looks like Trinamool is is, is is the only party which is really holding on to what they did. In fact, improving on what they did in, in the last election. So, so pretty much BJP is not in the necessarily in the fray in West Bengal here, and I don't even think they are looking at West Bengal as a state uh, as part of the calculations in terms of the seat count. Uh, so the real battle for the both leading parties is not in West Bengal uh, in that sense, Sonia. Okay, well, <coughs> coming back to UP and more importantly, Mayavati, she's also uh, uh, out there polling. What's the sense you're getting? Will, uh, have the pollsters underestimated BSP? Will we get a surprise uh, maybe in Eastern UP? Uh, I think, Lata, that's a very important question. Tendency of, of most pollsters has been to underestimate the BSP. There is no doubt about that. The Dalit vote is a more silent vote. Uh, Mayavati has, uh, has carried out a very under-the-radar campaign this time. She's been barely visible. Uh, a lot of reports lo locally say that she's doing uh, block-level engineering, which means she's looking at vote blocks at literally blocks in, 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 in at block-level uh, you know, constituencies, not even the whole if regions in, in that sense. And that's why it's becoming tougher for us to judge and estimate what exactly is playing out on the ground. But as I said at the start, the, the problem with the nine-phase election is that the momentum that you start off with can get disrupted by certain odd comments or certain odd activities that happen along the route. And the one comment that was made by uh, Baba Ramdev some days ago is certainly playing out in these part of the, uh, this part mm -hmm. of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Mayavati has missed absolutely no opportunity to seize on that. If you remember today, even today, uh, she mentioned it once more. She's mentioned in the past as well. She now makes it a point to call not Ramdev just as Ramdev, but she calls him Ramdev Yadav because she knows that there is a bit of a tussle that goes on between the Yadavs in UP and the EBCs and other lower castes, which, which which tend to not like the others so much. And that's why uh, this kind of engineering can impact a close contest. Remember, UP is a five-cornered contest. So any contest is a close contest. The margins are not very high in most seats. And any such comment can make a difference in a few seats. And that's going to be critical for, for at least the BJP uh, in this election. Specifically in uh, Rai Bareilly, you think uh, Sonia Gandhi is set for an easy win? I mean, there's no major uh, contestant against her as well. 
Oh, absolutely. I think Raiburili is one seat where there is almost like a match fixing going on because Samajwadi <laughs> has not even put up a candidate there. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is a trend that we've seen over the last two elections. In fact, the vote share of Sonia Gandhi has increased steadily. She almost has 69% vote share as of now uh, yeah. for the last election. And there is no SP candidate. So this is perhaps the only seat where you know it's a done deal. There is no opposition at all uh, in that seat. And I think they kind of give it up even before it starts uh, pretty much, Sonia. What are your sleuths from Punjab telling you? Will it be a, 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 a fairly emphatic win for Congress at all? Punjab, uh, Lata, is a fascinating story. I, in fact, I think most of our people who went to the field were, were very surprised with the level of anti-incumbency that is existing against the Akalis per se. The problem is not so much with the BJP. The problem seems to be that there is a double incumbency uh, for the Akalis. The people are really unhappy with the state government and that seems to be having some kind of an impact on this national election as well. Uh, even though it's getting a little uh, even, uh, not evened out, but certainly it's getting a little limited by the so-called pro-Modi sentiment that is there as well. But but the unpopularity of the Akalis is certainly there. And that's why you see that that is the only state where outside of Delhi, Ahmadi Party seems to be getting some kind of a vote share. In all our tracker polls, we've seen an upward climb of the vote share that Ahmadi Party is getting in Punjab. Now, whether that translates into seats or not is, is, is another question. But certainly, uh, the third front, the third party in the fray, Ahmadi Party, is going to damage somebody's vote count for sure. Uh, because there is some amount of disappointment. And that is getting reflected in Amritsar far more. Jaitley should have cantered in Amritsar, frankly. Uh, but but he is locked oh. in a pretty close contest. And he's left absolutely no stone unturned mm. to ensure that he has just passed. Just one, uh, you know, gut feel sort of a question, Vinay. Since the last time we spoke with you when you had your uh, 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 opinion polls and now, has the, the Modi wave only gotten stronger or do you think there are some, some chinks in the armor now? No, I think I think it's it's you know I think it's been it's fallacious to judge this election or any election or which happens over a period the kind of period that we have uh, in just one line. I mean it, th that's where the problem starts when you have a nine-phase election because each phase has its own character. Uh, there were sta and the way BJP has calculated everything and the way we've calculated is there are certain states which are absolutely safe states and they're looking at absolute sweeping those states. For instance, states like Gujarat or MP or Rajasthan where it's a bipolar contest and virtually no contest from the Congress at all. So those those are your seats with which you start off as an advantage with. I think the real battle is in the plus states, the states which you're targeting to gain and add to your tally. Those states are UP, they are Bihar, uh, they are pretty much uh, parts of Orissa, for instance, Andhra, where you now have an alliance with TDP. So the real battle is in these states. And in UP also, one of the biggest myths about Uttar Pradesh is there's one omnibus whole as a state. Uh, each part of UP thinks differently. Western to UP thinks very differently the way mm. Central or Abad region, which is going to polls today, works. Bundelkhand has its completely different uh, metier and, and grammar of elections campaigning. Uh, Eastern UP, the Purvanchal region, which BJP is banking very heavily on, has a very different way of looking at elections. So pretty much you have segmented approaches to each election. And that is why you see the discourse in election is changing in every phase. There is a reason why Modi went down and attacked Mamta in, in, before this election. There's a reason why Mamta hit back at him because mm. every phase has its own grammar. And that's why you see uh, the strategies which seem to be not fitting into some kind of a pattern do have a local influence there and that's why leaders are doing that. Okay. Well,